Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy, found on savannapath.name. I'm Pat Prokop. Tonight my goal is to take this telescope, the Celestron 11-inch F10 scope, and convert it down to an F2 for a super wide angle view of the heavens. The target tonight is the Stevens Quintet. That's five galaxies in a small area of view, but beyond that view there's even more galaxies up in the heavenly skies. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. So the first thing I must do is take the lens, the Hyperstar, uh, which converts, get it out of the case here, this right here is a Hyperstar HD, it converts the 11 inch f10 into a, the 11 inch f2, actually f1.8, uh, f but uh, this is the uh, system that does it, and it doesn't attach to the back of the telescope, no, it attaches to the front of the telescope. Now, with the Hyperstar, I'm going to connect my camera, the uh, Altair 294 color, all-purpose color, or all uh, one-shot color, and uh, it's an electronically cooled camera, so I'm going to have it set to around zero degrees uh, centigrade, or 23 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm here in Savannah, Georgia, so I can't cut it too much lower than that, or I'll get frosting up on the lens because it is still very humid. Yeah, I know it's October 27th, but it is still humid. It was 84 degrees today here in Savannah. We just had a front pass on through, but uh, the sky is clearing, but there's still a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. I'm probably going to get a lot of dewing going on throughout the night as well. So I have the dew straps uh, connected to the uh, scope and hopefully they'll prevent the dew from forming across the lens. So let's put this system together. Now one of the things I want to do though is to add the uh, Altair quad band one shot color um, filter which will really help with the light pollution in this area. It'll cut it down dramatically. I don't know how much it's going to help bringing out the galaxies because it's good for nebulosity. We'll see what's going to happen with the galaxies with uh, this system all set up. So let's put things together. This system is designed to have the focal length on the camera uh, with the lens match so everything will be in sharp focus. So the first thing I want to do is take off the cap to the camera. I have this little air blower. I always take the lens here and uh, the, the, the uh, sensor and just blow some air on it, pointing it upside down, getting all dust particles off. Hopefully there's no fingerprints on there. Nope. The next thing I want to do is to get the uh, filter. This is the filter. Well, I can get it out. Let's see. Upside down. That's it. Well, sealed for your protection. There it is. Careful not to touch the uh, glass. There it is right there. Sometimes you might hear the um, uh, filters and your filters jiggle a little bit saying they're too loose. That's okay. They're supposed to be loose. Uh, if they get too tight, they could uh, have issues with that. So it's designed to be a little bit on the loose side. So if you hear them jiggling, that's normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this little filter holder and put the filter on. It slips in like so. Careful not to touch the glass. And then screw this back on. Well, helps put it on the right end. There we go. I'm going to take my air blower, blow this off just as well. Just You want to get all the dust possible that you can get off your uh, light train. Next, I'm going to connect this to the camera. Like so. All right, the next process becomes a little bit involved. So I'm going to clear my area here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take the hyperlens back out of the case, air blow the lens, 
There's some gnats flying around here. All right, take the cap off the camera, or uh, 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 off the telescope. Let's see, that's a little bit too high. Let me bring the scope down a little bit. That makes life easier. Okay. All right. There's the, uh, the cap. With big telescopes come big caps. All right, the next thing I want to do is take the cover off the other side of the hyperlens, hyper uh, space. You can call it hyperlens, but it's the Arizona or star zona. It is the star zona hyperspace HD. And there you can see. Now, why did I do that? I want this to hold the secondary mirror on the from the telescope. So, let's take off the secondary mirror. It's not as scary as you think. Unscrew it. Now, now you know why I lowered the telescope. Take the lens off. There I go, taking the lens off. That's the secondary mirror. And there's a little notch right there. And there's a notch on here. And you just line the two up. They'll fit right in there. And now, you take the uh, clamp from the telescope. And you just screw it on here and your secondary is now safe from getting dirty or contaminated or in my case with fingerprints I'm gonna lock this All right. now the fun part I usually have little issues with this I gotta take the uh, well this is not so bad I gotta take the camera connect it to the hyperspace that wasn't so hard Now, you don't screw it tight, you just get it to where it stops. If you get it too tight, you could have issues. I'm gonna tighten these little screws here. I get one more last ch chance to clear that off. Okay, now put this on the scope. Ha! You got it the first time. That usually doesn't happen. Again, you don't tighten it all the way. Just to where it stops. Okay, the gnats are having a field day out here on me too. All right, almost ready. Now, the next thing I gotta do is connect the camera. That's simple enough. What I do is, this is the camera um, USB 3 connector. I run it underneath the cradle of the telescope back to the connector uh, to the uh, computer. Just plug it in. Like so. Now this is a thermoelectrically cooled camera, TEC, so it needs power. Uh, so I gotta get the power. And once again, I did the same thing with the power cable, running, running it parallel with the uh, USB cable. And I just hook up the power, like so. And I have the two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of tape. I'm just gonna tape that together. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pause the camera. All right, I got my tape. You don't need a whole lot, just to, you, you'll see why in a second I'm doing this. Get the tape. I'm going to take this right here. And that basically forms one obstruction 
to the field of view. The next thing I like to do is I take my hood cover. This helps to prevent dew forming on the lens. Also, it protects uh, from uh, uh, side lights or stray lights uh, hitting the lens from the angles, different angles, particularly from the side. So I always use this, but I cut some notches out to fit with the uh, dove bars. And I just flip it over the hyperspace lens, like so. There you have it. Now, almost ready to go. There's only one thing, boy, these dads. There's only one thing left to do. I gotta wait until the sun sets. That's gonna be about another two hours from now before it gets totally dark. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna cover up the lens so the gnats won't be crawling all over it. But they'll go away when the sun sets. That's all I have to do. I, I, I'll put a little rubber band on it just to protect. Also, if I pull the, uh, uh, the shade mask off a little bit, uh, away from the hyper lens, the hyperspace lens, in the morning, I can use this with a white t-shirt to take flats. Or what I usually do is just point it to a blue portion of the sky early in the morning with the sun being over there, I'll point it over there uh, toward the northwest and uh, I get great flats. Somebody asked me, how do you take flats with a hyperspace? Well, that's how I do it. Either way, you can put this over it uh, um, with the lens cover out a little bit more, or just don't use anything and point to a blue portion of the sky. It doesn't matter what the color is, because um, it's going to be converted into black and white anyway. So, let's wait. Now I'm inside and the computer, I can focus the uh, lens. This is the lens out of focus right now. I wanted to show you the, the restriction, that wire, remember I taped it? Uh, there you can see it there, but when you focus the uh, scope itself, uh, that will disappear. And there you can see the, uh, I put the Batonoff mask on and I was able to uh, focus rather well, uh, a nice good focus. So from there, uh, I went into the uh, system and I started to um, uh, record and uh, the uh, PHP tracking, I had the telescope balanced very well and I had some great tracking from the system. Uh, I was getting a lot of good subs right here. I was doing 60 second subs and there is a, uh, uh, a an output stretched picture of the sub itself uh, from the evening hours. So let's go into Photoshop back here over here again and look at one of the outputs and it's zoomed in way big right now because I have zoomed in. But this is the uh, final product right here. And there you can see a rather large galaxy here, a cluster of galaxies over here. This is known as the Dirichlet group. And then you have the uh, group down here, uh, which is known as Stefan's Quintet, five galaxies here. Uh, these galaxies are way out there. This one right here is about a mere 41 million light years away. Let's zoom in on that. Look at that uh, galaxy there. Uh, 40 million light years away. What about these guys? There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. And remember, these are galaxies containing billions of stars, perhaps up to a quarter of a trillion stars each. And here's just four of them right here, five. One, two, three, four plus five. Uh, these here are way back. Uh, they're about 400 uh, million light years away. Uh, what about the um, Stefan's Quintet down here? There it is, right there. These themselves are about 370 or so 
million light years away. There's another one, it's probably even further. Now, I've, <laughs> let's just do something here and scan over the picture itself. Um, it, it's amazing to me just how many galaxies are out there. Uh, and this is just one view. Uh, there's one right there. Um, uh, that's probably a good uh, 300, 400 million light years away. Um, that's a star up there. Right there. There's a galaxy right there. Um, uh, it's, it, it boggles the mind as to how many, there's one right there, uh, how many galaxies are out there. Um, so scanning across, there's one right there. They just pop up. Look at that one. There's one there. Uh, that's a star. That's a star. That, that's two stars. Uh, again, going across, um, could be a galaxy there. I don't know. Uh, my telescope is big, but it's not that big. Um, uh, nice double star right there. Uh, let's see, any more galaxies on that trail? Let's go through, further down and scanning across. We can go back again. Uh, I think that's a star. That's a galaxy right there. Uh, there now it's a double star there. I mean, it, it's amazing at how many galaxies. And of course, there's the big one there. Um, I think that's NGC 273, I think. There's a galaxy just to the left of that. Uh, back out a little bit. But as you can see, uh, multi-galaxies, that, that could be a, a, a galaxy. Um, let's go all the way down to the bottom of the picture here. See a lot of double stars and triple stars. Uh, but this hyperspace lens with the uh, Altair filter, the quad, quad band filter, it just gave me re remarkable results. The um, stacking turned out to be, I had um, two hours and 52 minutes worth of data. I went through a meridial flip uh, uh, during the middle of the uh, capture. So this is 172 frames or 172 minutes worth of data. And there you can see the output from that. So uh, with that I'm going to leave you with uh, another picture of the uh, galaxies uh, from the uh, shot of last night. And uh, if you're out there exploring, remember we are not alone. There are lots of stars out there and not only lots of stars, a lot of galaxies. So, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to like my page and to subscribe to my page. You can find it on savannapat.com. Thanks for watching.